Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics, and in this video I want to take a look at three different elements. The AGM-154A JSAL, the MSI LTWIS radar mode, as well as precise coordinate entry. Let's get started. Okay, so the uh, first thing we'll take a look at is the next version of the uh, JSAR, the 154. And this is going to be the A version, which is almost identical to the C version that we looked at in the earlier video. Uh, the big difference is that the C, video, uh, the C version has the uh, broach uh, unitary warhead for hardened targets, whereas the A version that we'll take a look at today has uh, 145 BLU-97 Bravo uh, combined effects munitions which are great against both uh, lightly uh, armored targets and armored targets. And uh, what we're going to be doing, we're going to drop a couple of these on a uh, SA-2 site defended in an airfield. So just like before, we'll go to air to ground mode. Uh, JSA is for the A version of the JSL. And just like the C version, we have both a pre-planned mode as well as a TOO modes. And I'm going to do a TO attack this time. And because it's a TOO, I want to set that to waypoint one. So we'll go HSI, waypoint, set that to waypoint 1, and weapon designate. And now we see here we have the outer ring, which is the maximum range of the weapon, and the inner ring is the minimum. And like we said before, uh, the higher you go, the faster you go, and the uh, closer you are uh, to the bearing of the target, the more range you'll get out of the weapon. So high, fast, and driving right toward is going to give you the best uh, range possible. So again, up on the HUD, we see that we're about uh, three minutes out to time to maximum range. We're in manual mode, and we have the A version selected. And range to target is about 48.4 miles out. Uh, time down, about nine minutes out. Actually, uh, we'll do it at seven minutes, 30 seconds, so about a minute and a half. Uh, E-fuse will set that to instantaneous. And we'll just wait a little bit here. So as mentioned in, uh, in the last video, uh, the big uh, task after this will be putting the uh, dynamic launch zones in for both the JDAM and the JSAL, as well as uh, launch points, and then also some of the additional fusing capabilities. And the cool thing is when we have the dy dynamic launch zones, you'll have both minimum and maximum range, as well as uh, almost like SACs on the HSI, which give you uh, the areas that you can uh, drop the weapon and still hit that target. So about uh, 8 minutes and 16 seconds out. And then after we have um, the uh, GPS weapons done, uh, we'll continue working on the Harpoon. And then after Harpoon, they have other weapons, of course, like the, uh, the Walleye 1 and 2, uh, Slam, Slam ER, and some other weapons as well. So uh, a lot of uh, weapons still to look forward to. And then, of course, in addition to the weapons, we have a lot of the sensors uh, being worked on. Uh, we're going to talk about MSI here in a minute, but you know, one of the big things about uh, LTWIS and MSI is it gives us the foundations to start working on the, uh, the full uh, trackwall scan mode, which will be one of the next tasks as well. And then, of course, you can have RAID and other functions. Okay, so we're, uh, we're ready to go there. Now I'll go to my display. Mission. Now, here's the other... Uh, the only really big difference between the C version and A version is that for the A version, you want to go to uh, the USC, go to HT for height, and here you can set the uh, burst altitude, and the default is 900 feet, so best to use that. And you'll see a 900 HT right here, uh, 50 seconds out. You can also see our range here. Uh, Quan Airness actually deliver both of these. And we see our diamond at the uh, target location as seen through the HUD. We see the diamond aligned up here on the heading tape with our bearing. So we're looking good here. 24 seconds out. So what about uh, you know, almost 30,000 feet? So I'll probably get what about a range of uh, 24 miles, which is pretty good. And waiting for the uh, in-range queue. 
Okay, you got to in range and hold down the weapon release button. And two weapons away. And speeding up the time here. Okay, we're coming in close, so slow it down. Okay, bursted. And now we'll have the sub munitions come down. Center point is the um, radar in the center. And good hits on that. And there's a second one coming in now. And the higher the burst is, uh, the larger the spread you'll have. But you know, the larger the spread, uh, the lower the chance of an individual hit then. So that's a look at the A version of the J-Cell. Now let's take a look at MSI. All right, so the next thing we're going to take a look at is MSI, or multi-sensor input, in combination with latent track while scan mode, also known as LTWIS. And in a nutshell, you can think of it as a combination of range wall search, or RWS mode, with the SA display. So here on the uh, MPCD, I have the SA display in the standard uh, half we've seen earlier uh, for friendly and hostile and RWR hits. And that's exactly what you're seeing here on the radar now, where we have uh, MSI enabled, where we have HAFUs instead of RWS bricks. So in the bottom one here, we can see a standard HAFU of hostile on the bottom and unidentified at the top, and the ones above that are all unidentified as well. So in this way, you have a much uh, better appreciation for what's out there ahead of you without having to reference down to the SA display. Um, the only change we have coming on this, which isn't quite accurate here, is that if a contact is only being detected by your radar, uh, rather than have foo, it'll have just a standard RWS brick, and we'll change that in a little bit here. Now to uh, enable or disable this, you simply go to the data sublevel, and then we have MSI here, and if I disable it, you see again, we have the RWS bricks, and we turn it back on, and we have uh, half foo symbols indicating MSI. So that's a little look at MSI in LTWIS. Now the uh, third and last thing I want to talk about is the addition of precise coordinates. Uh, this is actually added in the previous open beta, but I want to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about it today. And precise coordinates, is, as you might imagine, allows you to uh, either edit or add much more precise coordinates than we could previously using the precise function. So let's take a look at that. So as you might imagine, we'll come down here and we'll go to the uh, HSI page first. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just modify waypoint one. So go to waypoint, waypoint one, and now we'll go to data. Now here's our standard coordinates here of uh, hours, minutes, and seconds. Now if we hit precise down it here at push button 19, we uh, have it extended out. And now we go ahead and hit uh, USC. It changes the USC panel. Now we can adjust our position. So go position. So go north, say 4202, then enter. And now we can type in the seconds to uh, thousands of a degree. Say one, two, three, four, and enter. Now you see it updated here. And now we can do the same thing for the easting. So go easting. Say 42035, enter, and again now we can do the seconds of 1, 2, 3, 4, and enter. So this is a, um, a really handy way uh, to set in a much more accurate coordinate, particularly if you're delivering a GPS weapon like a JDAM or JSL. Anyhow folks, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Thanks.